I haven't been able to post for a while because my computer was messed up. All those problems are now behind me. And so I was thinking of a topic that I could talk about. And the most obvious and easiest one is just computers themselves. I haven't been entirely without a computer. The one I was using was probably about 10 years old, which in its day was probably quite a marvel. But of course today we get spoiled by speed and everything else that they can do. This particular model, not only could it not handle the video editing, couldn't watch YouTube in full screen, and anything else that had heavy graphics, it would either freeze or become very jerky. So let, let's look back at some of the computers that we might remember working with and see again how in their day they were absolute wonders but we kind of laugh at them today and wonder how on earth we managed to work with them. It was probably in the early 70s my father was shown the company's computer it was a company that had factories all over England and their processing centre took up one floor of a multi-storey building. It was air-conditioned, all the technicians would walk around in white overalls. The lights would flash on it, there'd be tapes whirring and the person who was showing my father was just totally overawed by it, as was my father. And believe it or not, it was a massive 64K. It was at the time, in their estimation, all the company would ever need for all its needs. Well, of course, as we know, time rolls on. We want to do more and more with the computer. And so what was once a marvel suddenly becomes horribly outdated. You probably remember the Commodore 64. Price-wise, actually, it was quite a uh, decent price. But when you think of the chunky graphics, slow speed, at the time, of course, it did what we wanted. But we soon got bored and wanted something better. A long time ago, cell phones have passed the 64K capacity. Wouldn't surprise me if a digital watch today would have more computing power. Probably about 13 years ago, I bought a computer that was top of the line for its computing power and everything, at least for a decent price. The hard drive was a massive 2 gig, because we laugh at that today. When you think about it, even the most basic or basic MP3 players will start at that price. But just think of the difference. For the MP3 player, today you can pay around $15. At the time, that sort of power, computing power, even if you built it yourself, as I did, cost $1,500, and more typically you were shelling out 2000 And so time goes on, but also remember, in those days we had dial-up, also considered to be quite marvellous. Anyone who's forgotten what dial-up is, look up the old uh, Star Wars movie, and you can see there what dial-up was. For some of you it might be ancient history, others a gentle reminder. I don't even know what uh, 
speed I have today, what it's basically known as high speed internet. But of course as we get faster and faster upload and download capabilities, the pages become more and more graphic intensive. So even they don't load, should we say, in a blink of an eye. And we complain if it takes more than a couple of seconds. But in the dial-up days, we pretty much had to contend ourselves with text. I remember when people started putting in small videos, perhaps 30 seconds long, and usually had to go away and make a cup of coffee and drink it and come back then you could view it. The idea of streaming was totally out. The other thing of course I noticed with the old computer that I mentioned at the beginning was that I couldn't watch YouTube in full screen. It would freeze up. But even that, relatively of course, is a marvel. But again, as I said, we get complacent with what we have, we want more. I don't know what computing powers they used to talk of when they used the term supercomputer. But I've read in general terms the typical desktop today is of course yesterday's supercomputer. So supercomputers obviously today must be something really marvellous. But it also boils down to basically cost. Because remember when 15 years ago, even 10 years ago, every new computer that came out was priced around $2,000. Then they decided to push them out to the market at 1500 and today you can still get quite a decent computer for 500. So it is just that they're able to produce more, the development costs perhaps remain the same, but you drop the price, more people buy, so the development cost is spread out more evenly. But all the time, the gamers usually are the people who are pushing for better graphics, more speed, those of us who like YouTubing, of course we want the best possible picture with the best possible speed. So of course we're also pushing the envelope there. Sometimes makes you wonder when it's all going to end and slow down. Do you think even the camera that I'm using which cost me approximately $30. 10-15 years ago you'd probably be paying easily 500 for something of equal power. And of course today you can still pay that amount for a camera but we each have to ask ourselves what capabilities we need and how much we're willing to shell out. Simply because getting top of the line in anything isn't always necessary for home use. Just think if you just want a computer for email, you could probably get any old computer second hand, pay a couple of hundred for it, or someone might even pay you to take it off their hands. I've noticed even today with some of the editing programs that I'm interested in I need a minimum of dual core when of course other people are already working with quad core. I'm a little behind the curve when it comes to understanding the complexities exactly what that interprets to but certainly I know the limitations of what I can and can't do. So it seems that quite likely in the near future 
I'll be upgrading again to be able to do what I want to do with the speed I want to do it and the complexity. But that's also the question of cost. How much does one want to pay relative to what one gets out of it? Also, as I mentioned, the little camera being $30, an amount I could pay no problem because I figured why spend 500 and who cares if you can do 500 things if one of the things on that list that I really want it for doesn't exist so I'm able to find out what I really need one of the things I know I do need is the ability to plug in a microphone so I can have it close to me and then to be able to record the sound that way rather than sit here consciously all the time making the effort to project my voice so that it can be heard clearly and as some people commented it does change my voice slightly from the normal pitch of which I'd speak which kind of destroys part of the object of making these videos was because of those who just want to hear me talking. So there we go with the basic summary of why I haven't been posting, some of my thoughts on computing speed, just to uh, give me something to talk about. The other interesting point on the time is that traditionally one was limited to 10 minutes on YouTube. I don't know how much you have to post before they offer you virtually unlimited upload time, but certainly I've already received that email. But the basic thought of just being able to ad lib for half an hour I don't think so. I'd rather do many more videos of shorter length and also again you can show by your comments how many of you would prefer me to speak for a longer time but perhaps less often or just break it up into these 10-15 minute segments. So. There we go, I'm off now to turn off the camera, edit the video, and upload it. So I wish everyone the very best, and hope that the next video won't be so long in coming. Because who knows, if the computer breaks down again, I'll be offline until I get that... Uh, new upgraded faster computer.